We're adding search to our bakery store page today using a front-end JavaScript library called Luna.js. So let's have a quick demo. Uh, at the bottom of the index page, there's a search box. I can type in a term. That's going to search my blog post for that term. It's found where did the cookie come from, and clicking on that takes me to the blog post. So let's have a look at how this works. I'm at the bottom of my index.html page, and you can see this form here. It has an action of slash search.html and a method of get. And then there's one form input we're interested in, uh, this query. So it's going to submit to search.html, so let's have a look at that page. On search.html, we have the same form here. Uh, in case the user wants to search again. We have a placeholder for the results. Then we have the script tag where we're initializing window.store and we're outputting a whole lot of JSON here. So we're iterating over the posts, making each key the post URL run through a Slugify filter. Then we have the title, author, category, and content, which are fields we want to search on, and then URL which we'll use in the output. If this is a bit confusing to you, go back and have a look at our outputting to JSON tutorial. Then we're loading the Luna library and search.js. So the search works in three steps. First, the user goes to search.html with a get parameter of the search term they're looking for. Second, this page will read the get parameter and search through this JSON for matches. And then third, those matches will be displayed in this URL here. So let's have a look at search.js, which is where all this magic happens. So this is where all the JavaScript is. Uh, it might look a bit intimidating, uh, but we're going to break it down into those three steps I mentioned before, um, so you can follow it easily. So the first step is to read the get parameter. JavaScript doesn't have an easy way of doing this. Um, so that's what this function here is doing. Don't worry too much if you don't understand what's going on in here. All you need to know is we can pass it a name and out will come the value of that get parameter. So here we're passing it query. So search term will be equal to the value of the query get parameter. All right, that's step one. Step two, we'll check if there is a search term. We don't want to perform a search if there's no search term. Then we'll populate the search box with that search term, initialize the fields Luna's going to be searching on. Um, so we've got title, author, category, and content, and we've given title a boost. So it's going to weight any matches on title higher than anything else. Then we're looping over the JSON data we set before and adding it to our Luna index. Then we're searching on that index, then passing our results and the search data to display search results. Okay, this is step three. The final step is to display the search results. We'll find the UL that is holding the search results, check if there's any results. If there's not, we'll just display no results found. If there is, we're gonna build a string of all the HTML in the output. Uh, so we'll loop over the results, um, get the result from the from our JSON, uh, and then output the URL, the title, and then the content, uh, which has been truncated to 150 characters. And finally, we add all that content to our URL, and we have all our search results. So this is a really easy way to set up search. Um, there's no third parties to set up. It all happens inside the client's browser, and it's super customizable. Um, this is just a really basic implementation where we're showing the title uh, and some of the content. More advanced implementations, you could do highlighting, um, you could do a live search, so it's showing results as it finds matches. There's a lot you can do here. Where it really falls down is if you have a large site you need all your search data in a JSON file, which has to be downloaded by the client. So if you've got hundreds of blog posts, 
it's going to be really slow if you try and implement it using Luna. This tutorial was brought to you by Cloud Cannon, the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcannon.com.